Well, I think it's a really interesting area. The uh, whole mobility space, the auto sector uh, main players are looking at is changing. Um, what they, what, uh, what, a, what a car will be and how it'll be used will be changing, and uh, all of those activities get enabled by data and the connect connectivity that brings with it. We've seen lots of talk about autonomous driving. The technology is there, but how that actually integrates into vehicles and into the road networks as well uh, is a big challenge that's still got to be overcome. Uh, that, that, that is a, that is a, re a really big challenge and um, I think uh, there are some, core, are some cores of communication technology that have remained. Your 15 year old Nokia will still talk to a cell tower but it's a relatively limited element. I think the key thing is really having a long, long term roadmap um, that allows, that really understands what the consumer needs and also the automaker needs and really try to stick to that and drive it forward. Well, uh, for us in motorsport, the whole concept of a connected car being new is quite unusual. In 1979, we ran our first connected car. It had a 64K uh, storage device on it and took 20 minutes to download a lap of data, but the car was connected. Uh, today, we have more than 300 uh, sensors, 1,000 channels, and generate sort of 60 to 80 gigabytes of data for a car over the weekend. But for us, it allows us to make decisions. And I think that's a really key and important thing in this, is data is easy to get now. You can get data on anything. But the question is really, what do you want to do with that data? For us, we want to make split-second race strategy decisions and optimise and improve our performance. Therefore, we then decide what data we need to collect, what information we need, and then that finally rolls back to what's on the, what's on the car. So data is at the cornerstone of our entire business. It's what our organisation drives on. We're much more of a sort of tech company than we are uh, a motorsport company. Yeah, that's, that's a really good question and Formula One's had a huge history of taking things uh, through, uh, through Formula One uh, into other sectors. Um, but predominantly safety systems, you know, ABS, um, ABS braking, traction control, crash structures have all come from Formula One into uh, mainstream automotive. Uh, one of the things that's often not talked about with the whole connected cars is the whole energy efficiency piece that's actually is driving a lot of this, which is electric powertrain. And for all Formula One cars have been hybrid since 2009. At Williams we developed uh, both the, the motor unit, the inverters, and most importantly the batteries and their control systems. We've now rolled that into Formula E. Our advanced engineering business powers the Formula E grid you see today, and uh, along with a number of other uh, new products for different automakers. And that's, that's probably the next big technology from, from uh, racing that's coming into mainstream is all of the electrical powertrain technology you see in car today start its life in Formula One. I think that's a very that's a very good question. I think the, there's a, some people are optimistic and say five years away. Some people say ten plus. I think that really depends. on autonomous cars exist today. You can see, you can see them. They drive around. Uh, Robo Race is a good example of uh, somebody demonstrating a racing car that's autonomous. However, know what the big challenge I think is actually how you integrate an autonomous car into a mixed environment. You know, if they're all autonomous cars in a zone city centre, they can interact today. How you make them interact with normal road users and those 14 years worth of legacy cars is a big challenge.